In this segment, I will show you how to prepare columns for injectable heat test. These are the items that we will need. A rigid plastic tube with a 22 millimeter inner diameter and 1.75 wall thickness. The tube that we are using is a plexiglass tube and it is around 1.5 meter long. In order to prepare our columns, we need to cut this tube into smaller tubes. So we will use a tile saw with a plastic cutting blade. We also need granular materials in the range 2.4 millimeter grain size. These are the crushed brick and the ones in the desiccators are the crushed protein material. And we will need a desiccator and an oven to dry the material. We will also need stainless steel wire mesh, which we will cut two 22 millimeter discs. The opening size for the mesh is around 0.5 millimeter. Next, we will need stoppers. These are solid rubber stoppers, size four, and we need two per column. We also need a rod in order to help us to position the wire mesh discs and a marker, a funnel to fill the granular material into the column and a balance. Dry the granular material in an oven at 105 degrees Celsius for 20 hours. Afterwards, cool the materials to ambient temperature in a desiccator for 4 hours before weighing. Repeat the drying and weighing procedure until a constant weight is reached. This is achieved when the difference between two successive measurements at a 24-hour interval is less than or equal to 0.1%. Cut the transparent plastic tube into columns 390 mm in length using a tile saw. At least two columns per grout are needed for each medium and injection condition. Here is the tube after cutting. We have to make sure that there is no residual small pieces inside the tube, so we will clean it up with an air gun. And also clean the edges. Weigh the column, including solid rubber stoppers and two wire mesh discs to the nearest 0.1 gram and record as M1 on data sheet. At this point, we will place the wire mesh at the bottom of the column. And I will place the plug to support it and use the rod to place it into the right position. Now I will begin marking the column. Mark columns at 50 mm intervals using a permanent marker, starting at the bottom wire mesh level. Mark the position of the wire mesh disc as the zero level. Mark up to a height of 300 mm. Mark the column with broken lines to indicate three equal filling sections of 120 mm each. Fill the column with crushed brick or crushed travertine in approximately three equal layers of 120 mm in height to compact granular material evenly. After filling the first layer, apply 50 lateral shocks by slowly hitting the vertically held column against the edge of a table while holding it from the bottom end. Shocks should be evenly distributed over the height of the layer, 10 times from the bottom to the top of the layer, and the column should be rotated 5 times. Then, fill the second and the third layers. Check the total height of the column. The total height of the compacted crushed brick or crushed travertine in the column should be 360 mm 
plus or minus one millimeter. If not, empty the column and repeat the filling procedure. The compaction of the granular material is very important in order to obtain similar capillary networks. I will place the wire mesh disc on the column and then the stopper. Finally, I will weigh the filled column with two stoppers to the nearest 0.1 gram. Once the weight of granular material used to fill the columns is determined, we can skip weighing the empty column defined as M1 in data collection sheet. Instead, we weigh granular material and use it for filling the columns. And we will store the columns upward until testing.